Here in the UK, there is a lot of talk at the moment about flying your drone for money and how this will work under the new UK EASA rules. Can a hobbyist realistically run a business with just an A2 CFC? What are the key differences and advantages of the courses? Today, I sat down with Matt Williams from drone training company UAV Hub to work it all out. Hey everyone, my name is Sean and welcome to Geeks Varna. This is the second video in our new series focusing on how the UK will adopt the upcoming EASA drone regulations. You can find a link to our new EASA playlist in the description. And to get more videos focused on this area, hit the subscribe button. So many of us now understand that the new A2 C of C will be a new qualification to allow hobbyist flyers to take their drones into congested areas like towns and villages for the first time. Changes in the regulations also mean that there will be no specific permission required to fly your drone commercially and make money. But what about the GVC, the General Visual Line of Sight Certificate? Which qualification would suit you the best to run a small drone business or make occasional money? In order to get to the bottom of this, I went straight to the source. Matt Williams is well known within the drone community as Mr. MPW on YouTube, and he also runs the successful drone training business UAV Hub. We sat down to talk about the key differences between the two courses. So could you explain briefly what the key differences between the A2 C of C and GVC are? Yeah, so uh, I think actually almost looking at it the other way around is is quite useful. So they're actually, I would say, very, very similar. Um, the, the main thing is that we feel as though the A2 is primarily for, it's going to be for more hobbyist users, more recreational purposes. And then the GVC is very much aimed at professionals. So that replaces effectively what all people have always called the PFCO course. Um, so I think that's the, the kind of delineation between the two. The A2 CFC allows people to fly smaller drones. So two kilos and lighter if it's a legacy drone. Um, four kilos and below if it's with the, a marked drone. And um, yeah, when those markings come out and there's information coming out about that in the next couple of days, actually from the um, EASA awesome. and the CAA. But um, yeah, when those come out, I think it's going to be very much smaller drones. People will use the A2. So that's why we see it more as a recreational thing. And then the larger drones, people want to do it kind of professionally, if you like, it's the GVC. Yes, because the um, I think some of the the questions of what's the difference almost um, uh, is because this is the first time we've had a qualification like the A2 CFC that gives the hobbyists so much more access to some of the um, A2 airspace um, in, in, under the open category, which I think is very exciting. Um, but yeah. the GVC is still very much because um, um, because technically under GVC you can get beyond visual line of sight um, permissions, can't you, etc. So it is the much more heavy, serious permission. That's it. So I think um, for probably 90 to 95 percent of people flying drones in the UK, we're using things like Phantoms, Mavics, you know, that that kind of aircraft for the five to 10 percent of people who want to fly something bigger or want to do things that are more complicated, like the extended visual line of sight, beyond visual line of sight, flying big drones over crowds of people you're not going to be able to do that under the A2 scheme. So that's where this the GVC really starts to set, set itself aside. Um, you know, you've got the Demares, this drone operator registration yes. scheme, as the basic building block. I can see you smiling because you know my thoughts on that. <laughs> um, so you've got that as the basic building block. If you want to be able to fly your drone in more places and it's a small drone, then it's the A2 qualification that you'll need. Then if you want to be able to move on and, and really, like I say, develop as a professional, do it as a business and do these extra things, then the next the next step up is the GVC. And that forms the foundation to then be able to get what are called bolt-ons. And it's those bolt-ons that you'll be able to do another course on top, which is extended visual line of sight. And that'll allow you to do extended visual line of sight. There's another one coming that'll be on beyond visual line of sight that'll allow you to do that. And it and it's very much then I think set in the playing field and, and a, a really good framework um, for people to be able to improve their capabilities and what they can do in the future. Because at the moment it's really it's a simple system. At the moment, you know you're either recreational and you stick to the drone code, mm. or it's commercial and you get your PFCO and that allows you to do a whole bunch of stuff. If you want to do beyond visual line of sight at the moment, or you want to fly larger aircraft or fly over crowds there is a system in place and it's the osc system this operating safety case and it's really expensive 
There's no guidance from the CAA. You know, it, it takes a very long time. You know, you're looking probably, I would say, three to five thousand pounds and six mm -hmm. to twelve months in most cases to get a basic OSC. Quite and specialized. all of a sudden, being able to do a GVC for you know five hundred pounds, the bolt-ons for a couple of hundred pounds on top of that, depending on who your provider is, and all of a sudden, you know, you that's that. But it isn't, I wouldn't say, applicable to probably ninety percent yes. of the people out there. Does the GVC require things like logbooks and paperwork similar to the PFCO? Yeah, and that's a great point, actually, I suppose, that um, the GVC follows that format. So it is, you know, you'll do the, um, with ourselves, it's online classroom course. Um, it's an online theory exam after that kind of learning piece has been done. Um, you then have to write an operations manual, the same as has always been the case. Um, although, you know, ourselves, we try and make that as simple as possible. It's not a stumbling block for people like it is with lots of other training providers. And then, um, yeah, you have to do a flight assessment. With the A2, there's none of that, really. It's you do the learning and then you do the online theory exam and that's you good to go. There's no flight assessment. There's no um, operations manual required. There's no flight logs required as such although we do recommend that you keep a log of your flights in case you ever get questions um, but for most people in the a2 scheme you know the dji app or whatever aircraft you're using that is probably going to keep enough information anyway there's a few nuances to the a2 down the line if you are using it as an organization so if you've got a number of pilots where it's not just one person flying into the a2 as most of us i think will be because anyone who's doing it as an organization probably have a gvc if you're doing um, if you're flying under an A2 as an organization, then you do need a, an operations manual and you do need to log your flights. But it's, it, it's, I think, very much for the recreational user, the hobbyist flyer, yes. people who want to go and enjoy flying. Like, we need to get back to a point where, as hobbyists, we can go and enjoy flying the drones that we've bought in places yeah. that we want to go oh, and fly safely. Have you had any conversations with insurance companies in terms of cost and availability of, of suitable coverage for an A2C of C holder to carry out occasional commercial work? Yeah, so we have. And there's one provider who um, is the provider we always used to use actually for our commercial drone insurance. And they are going very much in line with the regulations. So it will be, you know, you'll be insured to do the work that you want to do or the flying that you want to do. You'll just have to have that conversation with them. Um, I think, if I'm honest, a lot of them seem to be waiting to see when this gets implemented and yes. exactly how it gets implemented. Because, you know, we thought this was coming in, in on the 1st of July 2020 and it's been delayed because of the, the global situation. Um, and not by the CAA, actually, I think it's worth pointing out. As much as I bash the CAA regularly, it's um, yes. it was an EASA delay. Yes, which the meant last one was EASA, wasn't it? Exactly. That's yeah. it. So it meant that the framework isn't even implementable yet. Um, I love making words up live on camera. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, so I think a lot of places are waiting. So you will be able to get that insurance. It's going to be a case, though, of having to check your policy. And I think it's, it's a good point that you raise because... A lot of people, I think, with the A2 will be taken out, you know, paying £13.50 a year for the mm. insurance, which you can get now as a hobbyist pilot. But just be very, very careful because it may not cover you in the event that you are conducting commercial work. Exactly. That definition disappears in terms of the aviation space from the drone side, but it might still apply in the kind of litigation yes. sense of the word when because, it comes to because if, even though they're removing the the need to have a pfco to do commercial work it there is still wording in there isn't there to say that you you do still need to have insurance in place um if, if, if you're carrying out commercial works we've had i think the last count time of doing this video 670 ish people have come through the a2 system and it isn't even active yet awesome um you know so there's a lot of people out there who i think are uh, embracing it that have realized that actually i'm not going to bother renewing my pfco because i do weddings or i do real estate or i use it occasionally as a tool and this is the way we've got to start looking at these qualifications now you don't need to spend a thousand pounds on a drone course and qualifications to go and fly legally and safely we know that drones are generally quite safe now we've proven that over the last five or six years so take advantage Allegedly. of the new system I'm sorry. sorry. Allegedly, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it. Sorry. Not that the regulators would have you believe that. Yeah, but, uh, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, you know, that's why these systems have come about because all of a sudden it's like, look, if you're flying it occasionally, if it's a small drone, it, the risk is fairly low. Go out and fly sensibly. Just know what you should and shouldn't do, what you can and can't do, hence the A2. And that's why we're doing it at a really low value, a really high value, low cost option um, so that it's accessible to everybody because we don't want yeah. this kind of, oh, we can't do the thousand pound course so you are not worthy kind of thing it's just not right so thank you very much for joining us um you, you've also got your, your your new project the drone mentor about to, to to get up and running very soon as well haven't you that's right yeah so um we've taken the kind of stuff that we've learned over from the channel over the last year or so um the channel that i've run personally nothing to do with the business strangely but um yeah we've we've taken all the kind of um, comments and feedback that we've had from that people have really enjoyed what we've done on there i think but we want to tailor it to help you guys and help the community even more and uh, yeah so we, we're keeping the mr mpw side of things um so that i could do my rants about the caa and i can go <laughs> off and uh, do my bitching and moaning about different things that are going on in the industry that aren't helping the majority of users the recreational users um you know and uh, yeah and then the, the drone mentor will be things like how to edit how to get a drone show reel we'll do reviews and unboxings and all that sort Brilliant. of stuff interviews with people um so yeah really looking forward to that it's just um trying to get it right before we go live but um Indeed. you can go and register over at the drone mentor.com drop your uh, details into the kind of email box there and we'll let you know when things go live and there'll be special offers for anyone who signs up in advance for the courses that then drop uh, drop when they come perfect very exciting and, and there's also a link to the twitter account for the drone mentor in the description hopefully this helps to provide you with more information on which other courses could suit you this video was focused on helping those hobbyist flyers who are considering monetizing their hobby rather than a deeper dive into the professional side of the drone business which we'll be covering in more detail very very soon there will be more videos from our iasa series very soon including talking about where you can fly and an in-depth look at drone classes so remember to hit the subscribe button if you're new here Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Uh, uh, are you nosy sods? Go away. It's over. Every time.